One more week to go to Christmas. We're going to sing another carol today. So sing along and lift up the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible said, Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. I'm not here. Shepherds watch, they from my night, they see a bright new shining star. They hear a choir, sing a song, the music seems to come from afar. Hark now hear the angels sing, a king was born today. They found a little nook in the stable of all love. And in a major cold and dark, Mary's little boy was born. into your presence as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Won't you have your way in us? In Jesus' name. Let your voice we say. Spirit, sound rushing wind, fire of God, fall within, Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repent, turn from sin, revival embers, smoldering, breath of God, fan us into flame. We need a fresh wind. 
the fragrance of heaven pour your spirit out pour your spirit
Well, what a wonderful song to end the worship on, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name and a name we need to call upon all the time because Jesus is our Savior and He's our King. And as we come today and focus around church and worship and think about the challenges we're facing, I was reading how Jesus wore a crown of thorns in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew 27. And uh, when you read about the crown of thorns, it strikes you as odd. But if you go back to Genesis chapter 3, the Lord said thorns and thistles would come as a result of the fall. Now we're living under the fall and things prick us, things hurt us. We face all kinds of events and happenings that are hurtful, but Jesus wore the crown of thorns. He took the fall upon himself and he's the king of the fall. And we can look to him today, that name of Jesus, and we can trust him for our needs, even though many of us are living through challenging times. Just to mention, many of our team have had COVID. That's why we went into online church. And again today, just to help them get through it and to not increase infections. And we did it for their sakes and your sakes. But let me say it right now, we will have in-person services Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. But right now we want to pray for you and we want to encourage you. And I was reading Job and, and Job went through suffering. He suffered thorns, if you like, of the fall. And Job chapter 11 here, he says this wonderful passage. He says, you will surely forget your trouble, recalling it only as waters gone by. Amen and amen. He says, life will be brighter than noonday and darkness will become like morning. I'm trusting that for us as a church and for our country and for you and your family, you will be secure because there is hope. You will look around you and take your rest in safety. I'm trusting God that this thing's going to pass quickly, that you will get better if you're not well, and that we will go into the new year, we'll forget these troubles, and we will dwell in safety, not looking over our shoulders all the time and having to wear masks, but the future will be good. So we're going to yeah. pray. Pastor Vaughan is going to pray for you, yeah. for your needs, for your health, for your finances. And uh, as we stretch our hands out to you today, believe with us, for your well-being. Let's pray. Father God, as we uh, stretch our hands out, Lord, we don't exactly know who we are praying for. We know our congregation, but there may be people who are joining us for the first time who may not uh, uh, know us or we may not know them. But Lord God, thank you that you know all the needs, Lord. Thank you that your presence will come and will bring comfort. Lord, your Holy Spirit is our comforter. For those who have suffered um, various trials during this time, loss of loved ones, loss of businesses, loss of relationships and friendships and Lord everything that this pandemic brought this very uncertain time and we just want to uh, pray Lord God for for your for your goodness Lord to come to everyone Lord we pray for those who are not well at the time at this time Lord those with COVID those yes. with cancer those with um, whatever it is that that is causing them pain and discomfort Lord thank you that you are our healer are. and that you say in your word that healing are the children's bread and so father we just thank you that your promises are yes and amen and so as we reach our hands out towards those who who are in need you, and who are suffering thank, thank you. you that you will mm. bring a new day a new morning uh, your mercies are new every morning and that lord god some of the hurt will begin to fade and they'll be left with good memories but they'll have strong hearts father god because you are healing them you are healing them in jesus name amen Amen. Now, as you're at home, what I want you to do, if you're troubled in heart and you, you're, you're finding your heart giving in, a lot of people are taking incredible strain. Just put your hand on your heart right now. Just put your hand on your heart. Believe with me. I'm going to pray for God to strengthen your heart. Father, in Jesus' name, for every person whose heart is failing them, yes, strengthen them. Fill them with hope, fill them with confidence, fill them with a faith that, that, that is despite the circumstances. Strengthen their frame, strengthen their mind, and cause the joy of the Lord to bubble through. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, we're really concerned about you and we really feel for you and we have missed you. 
and it's been terrible to have to go back, back online, but we can go back online, fortunately, and we thought it was good for the sake of the church, even though government didn't mandate it or didn't require it. So it was for your good. But anyway, if you're with us for the first time today, welcome. We're so glad that you've joined us online. And if you're watching on your phone, go to our website and you can find out all about our church. There's a visitor section and it'll tell you about our vision, our values, our culture, and so on. If you're watching on the big screen, there's a QR code. You can scan that and it'll tell you all about Rivers Church. And drop us a line. If you enjoyed the service, we'd love to hear from you today. Now we have a promo video we're going to show you because tonight is Carol's Night, a Carol service online, and Christmas is coming up. Let's have a look at the screen. Join us this December as we celebrate the birth of Jesus at one of our wonderful Christmas services, starting with our online carol service this evening at 5 p.m. Invite friends and family over for a festive night and sing along to your favorite carols in the comfort of your own home. Then, join us online or in person on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day for one of our special services celebrating the day when heaven came to earth. Christmas is the best time of the year to invite someone to church. So share the good news and invite friends and family to join you for a service. Bookings for in-person services open on Tuesday morning, so gather your friends and family and secure your seat. Our online Christmas market is still open, so get your last-minute Christmas shopping done by visiting us at rivers.church forward slash store. Well, there we go. Christmas is coming up, carols tonight, and it's going to be in-person services on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and we're looking forward to that and no matter what happens we will run those services because we're trusting God to gather together carefully and safely and to enjoy celebrating the fact that heaven came down. Now as we come around our offering today it's very important that we don't forget where blessing comes from. Blessing is not luck or chance, blessing isn't random, blessing is connected to how we live as believers, how our hearts are towards God and we are giving priorities lie. You know, in the book of Haggai, the Lord speaks to his people and he actually reminds them, he says to them, you're lacking things and you don't understand why. And it's because you've made yourselves the priority instead of making me the priority. And you know, at Christmas time, when it's supposed to be a focus on the Lord, we focus on holidays, food, presents, spending our money on all sorts of things but sometimes we can neglect the house of God. And I want to read to you just these short verses here from verse uh, 5 to verse 11. And it says, now this is what the Lord Almighty says, give careful thought to your ways. In other words, think about what you're doing. He says, you've planted much, but harvested little. Gosh, you eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your full. In other words, you're not satisfied. And he says, you put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Many people can relate to that. And then he says here, this is what the Lord Almighty says, give careful thought to your ways. Second time he's saying, think about this. And then he says, go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house uh, so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Then he says, why? Why, declares the Lord Almighty. In other words, think about it. Why is this happening? Why is there lack in your life? This is not just chance. This is not just COVID. Maybe there's been a shift of priorities. And he says here, why, declares the Lord Almighty, because of my house, which remains a ruin while each of you is busy with your own house. Therefore, because of you, not because of chance, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew and the earth its crops. And then he finishes off, he says, I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the olive oil, and everything else the ground produces, on people and livestock, and on all the labor of your hands. I have frustrated things, the Lord says, because you didn't fulfill your 
responsibility. You focused on yourself, not on me. And you know what? Just a quick reminder. It's Christmas. It's about him. Jesus is the reason for the season. And the Lord wants us to be faithful because he needs us. He needs us to be faithful. He wants us to be faithful, but also faithfulness unlocks the blessing. So this Christmas, don't just make it about you. Don't just spend your bonus on yourself. Don't, uh, you know, cut back on your giving because, well, you know, we've got a lot of expenses. No, the Lord must be first. He's the reason for the season. And when we're faithful, we will experience blessing. Give careful thought, he says, to this matter. Now, I want to encourage you in your giving. You can see on screen, you can give by QR code. You can go to our app and you can click on the app and you can give via snap scans. Very, very convenient. And we will do that as soon as we're done with you. But when I just focus on you for the moment, we are doing this each week, even when you don't see us online, we focus on this and we are faithful in our giving because we've seen it to be the blessing in our lives and the blessing is released because of it. So be faithful. And then as you give now, I'm going to pray for God's blessing on you, on your home, on your family and on this holiday time and that you'll have no lack in January, but you'll be blessed. Are you ready? Come, let's pray. Father, we thank you for every giver today. We thank you for faithful people, people who understand that your house comes first, who put you first. I pray that you'd bless them and as you promise that, Lord, their purses would have no holes in, they would eat and be satisfied, there would be a blessed Christmas, a blessed New Year, and that January would be wonderful and that they would have their priorities correct. Bless them in their giving, reward them abundantly, even as you promise so many places in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Expect God's blessing in reward for your faithfulness. Now, Pastor Dean is going to be speaking today across our campuses. And what we've done over the holidays is we've given each one of us a pause. We've been preaching relentlessly throughout the year and enjoyed it and uh, felt that we had the word of the Lord for each time we preached. But today, Pastor Dean is speaking across all our campuses and he has a word on his heart. Pastor Dean and Yannette run the Durban North Campus and have been there for about 13, 14 years it is now. And he's a great communicator, he's got a heart for God, and he's a wonderful asset on our team. You're going to enjoy the ministry, open your heart to him, and let's hear the Word of God today. Well, hi there, church. I hope you're doing really, really well. And can you believe that Christmas is only one week away? You know, I don't know where this year has gone, but I'm grateful that by the grace of God, we've made it through another tough and challenging year. And I also have to add that I'm so looking forward to the new year. I just know that God's got good things planned for us as a church as we begin to rebuild what has been lost during COVID. And I'm also believing that for you and for your family that 2022 is going to be a year filled with God's favour and His blessing. Can you say amen to that? Wonderful. Well, today I have, I have the immense privilege of speaking into all our Rivers campuses, both in person and online. And I've got a word that I believe is going to encourage you and inspire you as we come to the end of the year before our Christmas services next week. So I hope you're going to lean in. I know you're going to be responsive and also make sure that you are taking notes too. Let's just take a moment and pray and commit this to God. Father, we just come before you in Jesus' name across all our campuses today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth that you bring to our lives. And I pray that as I speak, Lord, that you would speak through me, that your word would penetrate every heart today. And may Jesus be glorified through all we do. Bless your people in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Richard Vermbrand was a Romanian Christian man of Jewish descent who lived at a time when communism was sweeping across Romania and much of Eastern Europe. And in 1948, after publicly denouncing communism, he was imprisoned for his Christian beliefs and, and Richard Vermbrand served a total of 14 years in prison. Uh, now, his story has been written of in a book that many of you might have read called Tortured for Christ, uh, where he describes the torture and the suffering he endured because of his faith in Jesus uh, the book tells us that he was frequently beaten. His body was mutilated. Uh, he was burnt with branding irons and, and was often locked in ice boxes. And three of his 14 years in prison were actually spent in solitary confinement. 
And uh, he later wrote that he didn't have sufficient words to describe the pain that he endured. And uh, yet when he finally came out of prison, well, he continued to serve Jesus. He preached the gospel with even greater passion than before. And, and amazingly, Richard Vermbrandt never became bitter towards his persecutors. Uh, he didn't hate those who'd hurt him. He never denounced his faith in Christ or as many are doing nowadays, he never deconstructed his faith. No, he stayed fully committed to Christ and he came out of prison more on fire for Jesus than ever before. And, and uh, you, know, you know, some people will say, well, well, how's that even possible? Well, it's only possible because he knew that this world was not his home. He was looking ahead to heaven and, and because he lived with an eternal perspective, well, it changed how he lived on earth and, and especially how he responded to trials and hardship. You see, Richard Vermbrand lived on earth, but with heaven in mind. And I want to speak to you today across the campuses on the, the topic of living on earth with heaven in mind. Now, the Apostle Paul was someone who, who could certainly relate to hardship and persecution and you know, after he gave his life to Jesus, he suffered greatly for the cause of Christ and was eventually beheaded because of his faith. And in writing to the Galatians, he finishes his letter by saying this in Galatians 6.17. He says, from now on, don't let anyone trouble me with these things, for I bear on my body the scars that show I belong to Jesus. You know, the scriptures tell us that Paul was beaten regularly. He was stoned and left for dead. He was shipwrecked and, and he, he endured much pain and hardship because he served Jesus. Yet Paul never lost sight of what God had called him to because Paul also had an eternal perspective. And in the book of Colossians, uh, he wrote to the church about setting their sights on heaven so that they could overcome all the challenges and all the disappointments that life brings. And I want us to read this passage together from Colossians 3, from verse 1. And Paul writes and he says, Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Remember, church, heaven is not a fictional place. You know, it's not just... Uh, something we speak of to make people feel better at funerals. Heaven is a real place. It is the dwelling place of God himself. And it will be the final resting place of all believers one day. And, and Paul says here that we are to set our sights on heaven. Then verse 2, he says, Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. You know, I recently uh, read a story of two sisters uh, years ago who lived very much a, a wild kind of life. They were always going to these wild parties and drinking and get involved, uh, getting involved with all the wrong people. And uh, then they got saved and they gave their lives to Jesus. And, and shortly after that, they received an invitation to another one of these wild parties and they sent their RSVP in these words. They said, we regret that we cannot attend because we recently died. You see, when we give our lives to Christ, well, we die to the things of this world. We, we die to old habits and the way we used to think. Uh, we die to the things that used to have a hold on us but we can only stay dead to those things if our minds are constantly on heaven and on eternal things. The late Billy Graham, who lived to the age of 99, used to say that my home is heaven. I'm just traveling through this world. You know, one of the things that our family does every year is we, we go on holiday together. It's something we've always prioritized from when our kids were born. And, uh, you know, there's just, you know, there, there's nothing quite like relaxing for a few weeks at the end of the year, you know, kind of just lying there in the sun, unwinding uh, from all the pressure and the responsibility. 
And if you've ever been on a holiday to a nice place, well, you've probably said something similar to what I've said before. You know, especially when you become relaxed and, and comfortable in that environment. And uh, you've probably said, I could easily live here. I'm sure you've said that before. Oh, I could easily live here. You know, but then I have to remind myself that, that the holiday place, as great as it is, is and, and as much as it starts to feel like home, well, it's not home. It's a temporary dwelling place. And as believers, we need to be careful that we don't get too comfortable here on earth and that we don't begin to adapt and make this our home because church, this is not our home. In fact, in uh, Philippians 1.27, Paul says, Above all, you must live as citizens of heaven, conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. You know, never forget a church that as Christians, we are only temporary residents of this world. We are not permanent residents because we are firstly citizens of heaven. And, and when we live with an eternal perspective, well, it impacts and changes the decisions that we make in the present. And, you know, in many ways, Christians are, are meant to be like submarines. You know, a submarine is, is made to travel under the water, yet every submarine comes equipped with a periscope to see the things above the water. So it travels in the water, but its sights are set above the water. And, and as Christians, we have to live and work and, and function in the world but our minds and our affections must be set on the things above. So although we are in the world, we are not of this world because we are citizens of heaven. Now, the great preacher and author Vance Havner uh, once said that the tragedy of the times is that we are so obsessed with the temporal that we are ignorant of the eternal. But you know, when we live on earth with heaven in mind, there are some things that we do differently. And I want to just mention a few of them to you today. And I hope wherever you're watching from, you're being encouraged. And maybe you can just give a loud amen right now. That's fantastic. Well, when we live on earth with heaven in mind, the first thing, number one, is that we hold lightly onto the things of this world. You know, it's always a, Great reminder that we can take nothing with us to heaven one day. You know, everything you own will stay behind. Uh, your new car, it, it can't go with you. The dream house you bought, it's not going with you. The money you worked so hard to earn, it's not going with you. And, and, and someone else is going to one day spend it on your behalf. Your business, it can't go with you. There's nothing that we own in this life that will come with us. And yet so many people hold so tightly onto what they own. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that we, we can't own nice things and, you know, it doesn't mean that we can't enjoy the blessing of God. Of course we can. But just hold these things lightly because whatever we hold too tightly will eventually ends up getting a hold on us. Now, in 1 Corinthians 7 verse 29, uh, Paul says, Let me say this, dear brothers and sisters, the time that remains is very short. Those who use the things of the world should not become attached to them, for this world as we know it will soon pass away. Now, when my dad was still alive, he was a sports fanatic, and uh, his passion in life was, was his soccer team. Uh, my dad was a diehard Tottenham supporter, which sadly... I inherited from him, and, and I say sadly because, well, our team just never wins anything. But, you know, growing up, my dad would often tell us that when he died, he wanted to be cremated so that his ashes could then be sprinkled at White Hart Lane on the field, which at the time was Tottenham's home ground. And, and listen, he wasn't joking either. He was adamant that that needed to happen. But when he uh, got diagnosed with terminal liver, liver cancer and, and was told that he only had a month to live. You know, we asked him about this, whether he still wanted that. And, and unsurprisingly, he said, no. You see, my dad lived his whole life as a non-believer and only gave his heart to the Lord weeks before he died. But those few weeks were enough to change his perspective 
on life and eternity. And, and he realized that he had to let go of the things that he held too tightly. Uh, Rick Warren, who wrote The Purpose Driven Life, uh, said that you will not be in heaven two seconds before you cry out, why did I place so much importance on things that were so temporary? The second thing when we live on earth with heaven in mind is that we overcome trouble and trials. You know, I think we can all agree that COVID has brought much trouble to our lives. I mean, none of us are praising God for COVID and, and all of us have been affected uh, by some degree, but, but even though it's been with us for nearly two years and, and at times it still feels like it's going on forever, COVID is only a temporary thing. It won't last forever. And it's the same with all the other hardships and the struggles that we have to endure. They are all temporary when we view them with heaven in mind. In 2 Corinthians 4.17, Paul says that our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone because they're temporary. But the things we cannot see will last forever. You know, without an eternal perspective, trouble and pain and suffering are very difficult to reconcile. If, if you and I can't see beyond our present hardships, well, we will always be overcome by them. And as Christians, we will always face difficulty and hardship. None of us are immune from it. You know, if you think serving Jesus is going to bring you a trouble-free life, well, you're horribly mistaken. Every person who lives as a citizen of heaven on earth will be persecuted and will face troubles of many kinds. That is guaranteed. But when you live with your sight set on the reality of heaven, it changes how we go through pain and suffering and all the other troubles that we face. And, and in the context of eternity, every hardship is temporary. You know, church, never lose that eternal perspective of things. And, you know, I know there are people uh, watching the service today and, 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 and you're going through much trouble because of your commitment to the Lord. My encouragement to you today is simply to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the cross. Set your sights on the realities of heaven and begin to live on earth with heaven in mind. You know, there's such a powerful promise in the book of Revelation, uh, which has always encouraged me in my personal life. And, and it's a promise for everyone who lives with heaven in mind. Revelation 21, 4 says of the Lord that He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. That's because they were only ever temporary things. You know, there's that uh, wonderful old story of a, a woman who was diagnosed with a terminal illness and she'd been given three months to live. And, and as she was getting her things in order, well, she phoned her pastor one day and asked him to uh, come to her house to discuss some of her final wishes. And, and uh, she told him which song she wanted sung at her funeral, what scriptures she wanted read. Uh, she even told him what outfit she wanted to be buried in. And then she also requested to be buried with her favorite Bible. And uh, then she said to the pastor, she said, I want to be buried with a fork in my right hand. Well, the pastor, I mean, he didn't want to be disrespectful, but he, he just kind of looked at the woman, not, showing how, not knowing how to respond to that. And uh, the woman then explained, and she said, uh, in all my years of attending church socials and potluck dinners, uh, when the dishes of the main course were being cleared, someone would inevitably lean over and say, keep your fork. She said, it was my favorite part of the meal, because I knew that something better was coming, like velvety chocolate cake or apple pie. And then she said, so when people see me in that coffin with a fork in my hand, and they ask, hey, what's with a fork? She said to the pastor, I want you to tell them, keep your fork. The best is yet to come. 
You know, church, when we live on earth with heaven in mind, it changes how we go through trials and trouble because we know, we know that by the grace of God, there are better things to come for us. Can you say amen to that? I love what Charles Spurgeon uh, once said. He said, Christian, meditate much on heaven. It will help you press on and to forget the toil of the way. The veil of tears is but the pathway to the better country. The world of trouble is but the stepping stone to a world of bliss. The third thing when we live on earth with heaven in mind is that we live daily with our affairs and relationships in order. You know, one thing I always try to do when I go and leave is to make sure I leave no loose ends for the team to have to sort out. You know, I make sure that everything that I'm responsible for has been taken care of to the best of my ability so that when I'm away, uh, no one has to waste time trying to sort out things that I should have done. And I think that's a great approach to take with regards to life and, and particularly our affairs and our relationships with people. To live each day with all these things in order. Now, most people don't like to think about death, but you know, the reality is that, well, death could come for any of us at any time. Uh, none of us are guaranteed another 10 or 20 years or, or even a week or a day. We don't know. Any one of us could step into eternity at any moment. But when we live with our minds on heaven and our, and our sight set on eternity, well, we tend not to leave loose ends with regards to our affairs and our relationships. In Ecclesiastes 7 verse 4, the Bible says that a wise person thinks a lot about death, while a fool only thinks about having a good time. You know, so many people die with uh, huge amounts of money owing to others, uh, with taxes outstanding, with unforgiveness that was never extended. People die with bitterness and, and resentment that festers in their hearts, uh, with relationships broken that could have been mended. But when we understand that we all have to give an account to the Lord for our actions one day, well, we tend to live very differently. The Bible commentator David Guzik says that the best Christian living comes from minds that are fixed on heaven. You know, we've seen in our own country how leaders and, and those in power have pillaged the resources of our country. People have taken what should have been used to fix South Africa and, and to help the poor, and they've just put it in their own pockets. But you see, that's what people do when they live without an eternal perspective. You know, you basically think you can do what you like without consequences, but there are always consequences, and, and we all have to stand before God one day and give an account of our lives. You know, church, when we live with heaven in mind, well, we tend to treat people very differently. You know, we spend our money more wisely. We don't hold grudges and take offenses easily. We work a lot harder at mending and building relationships. Uh, we give thought to the legacy that we leave behind for our children. We're more intentional about what we invest into other people. And, and we tend to live in a way that is pleasing to God. Because we understand that everything we do has a knock-on effect into eternity. Then fourthly, when we live on earth with heaven in mind, number four, we sow now to reap a heavenly harvest. We sow now to reap a heavenly harvest. You know, one of the great things Jesus taught is that when we give to build God's church and His kingdom, not only are we blessed now, but we also store up treasure in heaven. You know, everything we give to the Lord goes ahead of us to heaven. And in Matthew 6, verse 19, Jesus said, Don't store up treasures here on earth. Earth speaks of the temporary, where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. He says, store your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. You know, I think as South Africans, listen, we know all about thieves coming to steal from us. You know, we build high walls and we 
put up electric fences. We take out insurance policies. People have safes in their homes. We, we set up security systems and, and we do all of this to prevent others taking what is ours. You know, that's just how things work on earth. And then one day when you die, all the things that weren't taken from you, well, you end up forfeiting anyway. I mean, it's, it really is a no-win situation. And, and of course, Jesus knew that. And that's why he told us to store our treasure up in heaven, to send it on ahead of us. Because there, well, it can never be stolen or, 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 or taken or expropriated. You know, no one can take it from you. It never expires, but it just keeps growing and growing and growing for all eternity. Adam Clark in his commentary on the Bible says that if God be the treasure of our souls, then our affections and desires will be placed on things above. An earthly minded man proves that his treasure is below, but a heavenly minded man shows that his treasure is above. You know, if you struggle to be generous or to give to God, I think it's probably an indicator that your sights are not properly set on the reality of heaven. You know, if we don't live with heaven in mind, we will always find it hard to let go of our money and, and the things we own. But, but if we live as citizens of heaven, well, we know that whatever we give to the Lord to build His kingdom and advance His church always goes ahead of us. And so we can confidently sow now to later reap a heavenly harvest. And then lastly today, when we live on earth with heaven in mind, we eagerly anticipate seeing Jesus face to face. We eagerly anticipate seeing Jesus face to face. There's that great passage of scripture in 1 Corinthians 13 in verse 12 where uh, Paul writes and he says, we can see and understand only a little about God now, as if we were peering at his reflection in a poor mirror. But someday, someday, he says, we are going to see him in his completeness, face to face. You know, I don't know how that makes you feel, but I, I personally find that thought quite overwhelming. That one day, one day, I will see the Lord face to face. You know, I know some of you watching today have served the Lord for many years and, and the reality is that, you know, many of us will go through life having served Jesus for the better part of our lives. You know, if you think about it, we, we worship Jesus. We lift our hands to Him in praise and adoration. We sing songs about Him and, and to Him. You know, we pray to God the Father through Jesus. We, we read about Jesus in the Word. In, in fact, everything in the Bible revolves around Jesus. You know, we tell non-believers about Him. We talk about Jesus amongst ourselves as Christians. You know, we share our, our testimony with others about how good He's been to us and, and how He saved us. Every week in church, we, we hear sermons about Jesus. And yet, we've never seen Him. Just think about that for a moment. You know, we've, we've seen pictures of him in, in children's Bibles and uh, we've seen people act as Jesus in movies, but we live our whole lives in service to him and yet we've never seen him. But one day we will see him face to face. We will see the fullness of God in all his glory. Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we will be so completely overwhelmed. And listen, if, if, if that doesn't get you excited today about the reality of heaven, well, then you have to wonder whether you're actually living for that place. But in that moment, Paul says, we will see the Lord as He really is. We will see our Creator and we will be completely blown away. And you know what? Nothing else will matter again. The problems we faced, they won't matter. The troubles we went through won't matter. The persecution we experienced, the, the disappointments we went through, none of that will matter when we see Jesus face to face. 
You know, we've probably all said at some point that when we get to heaven one day, oh, I'm going to ask God about that thing and, and I'm going to question the Lord about those other things that happened. And then we're going to go find that other person and talk to him. I don't think so. I just think we'll be so in awe of seeing Jesus face to face that none of those things will ever matter again. Church, what a moment to look forward to as believers. And you know that that face-to-face encounter will not just be a once-off thing. You know, it's not like we're going to say, oh, you know, wow, yesterday I saw Jesus face-to-face. It was awesome. No, no, no. Every moment in eternity will be as if you're seeing Him for the first time. Church, as we come to a close today, I want to just encourage you with the words of one of the Hillsong songs that has always lifted me when I've, you know, been weighed down. And it's a song called Soon. And some of the words go like this. Soon and very soon I'll be going to the place He has prepared for me. There my sin erased, my shame forgotten. Soon and very soon. Though I have not seen Him, my heart knows Him well. Jesus Christ, the Lamb, the Lord of heaven. I will be with the one I love. With unveiled face, I'll see Him. There my soul will be satisfied. Soon and very soon. I'm going to hand back to each of the different campuses to pray and finish up the service. Uh, Thank you for watching today. Have a wonderful Christmas and may God bless you as you live on earth with heaven in mind. Well, church, I'm sure you all agree with me that that was an incredibly powerful message, a message that puts things into perspective, especially at this time of year, living on earth with heaven in mind. I love what Pastor Dean said right in the beginning, that as Christians, we need to remember that we're only temporary residents here on earth. This is not our final place. We're actually citizens of heaven. Heaven is our permanent dwelling place. But here's the thing. To become a citizen of heaven, we need to make the king who is over all of heaven, Jesus Christ, the king over all our life. I wonder if you've done that today. Or maybe you have done that, but somewhere along the journey of life, you've allowed sin to rule your life. You've you've allowed something else to take on the throne of your life or, or to sit on the throne of your life. And you've realized today that only Jesus belongs on the throne. Maybe this message has reminded you that we live for more than just this lifetime. We have to live with heaven in mind. Today is an opportunity for you to make a decision to put God on the throne of your life, to put Jesus Christ at the center of your life. As I said, in order to become a citizen of heaven, Jesus needs to be on the throne. And today we're going to pray a prayer. And if you want to make that decision for the very first time, or if you want to come back to Christ, you want to recommit your life to Christ, won't you pray this prayer with me wherever you are today? Dear God, today I recognize that I am a sinner and I am in need of a savior. But I also recognize that I can't save myself. However, you can and you did. Lord, today I invite Jesus to be on the throne of my life, to be the savior of my life. I recognize that I'm just a temporary resident on earth, but there is heaven beyond this lifetime and I want to be a part of that. Today, I give you my life. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for taking my sin, my shame, and my guilt, and for paying the price and for paying the debt that I could never pay. Come into my heart and make me a new creation. From this day forward, you are the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, church, if you made that decision today, what a fantastic decision and the most important and powerful decision you will ever make in your life. But it might be the end of one journey apart from Christ, but it's the beginning of a whole new journey in Christ. And God wants us to move from making a decision to becoming a disciple. And we want to help you along on that journey. You'll see some information coming up on the screen to help you with that and the next steps that you need to take. And if you'd like any of our team to contact you to help you with this journey, simply leave your details and we will gladly do so. Well, we're so excited because just a few days away is Christmas, the most exciting time of the year. And we've got some fantastic Christmas services in store. So make sure you stay up to date through our Rivers website on the various campuses and through our social media accounts. It's going to be fantastic as we celebrate the day that heaven came down. Have a fantastic rest of your day. God bless.